Hi, my name is Connie Carmen. I work at Emmanuel Church in the areas of spiritual direction and spiritual formation. We are living in an uncertain time right now. With the coronavirus, many people are scared. They're frightened. And even some people are even panicking. We at Emmanuel Church would like to offer a way for us to um, examine our mental and emotional health and find ways to make it stronger and to walk in faith and courage. Um, when I think about this, um, every day I get messages in my inbox. And every day they're from all the different businesses I work with. And they're telling me, we want to protect you from the coronavirus. We are here for you. We want to make sure you're safe. And I look at those and I think, well, that's great. However, most likely I won't even be at those businesses. I won't even be working with them and I won't be near them so they don't have to keep me safe because the government's told us to social isolate and to stay indoors, stay at home. So I will be staying home. So when I look at that, I think I'm thankful that they care about me, but I'm not sure I even need that. What do I need? What do I need during this time? What would help me during this time to become healthier? What would help me during this time to, you know, see God in a new way, trust God in a new way? Um, thinking about this, I have uh, considered some different things. And I recently read this book by Kirk Thompson it's called Anatomy of the Soul. In this, he's talking about the brain. The whole book is about the brain. And he's talking about the brain and how we can grow and change and become healthy, how our brains are continually evolving and becoming healthier. And we need to use them to do that. But the main crux, cru well, the main crux of the whole book is about um, being known, about each one of us having the desire to be known and for others to know us. So we know that Psalm 139 tells us that God knows us intimately, inside and out. He knows everything about us. He knows when we stand up, when we sit down, when we go to sleep, when we're awake. He knows everything. But beyond God knowing us, we want others to know us. We need other people in our life who know us the same way. People who spend time hearing our story and helping us in that story, helping us to grow in that story. And when we're asked to be social isolated or to be home, it's really hard for us to be building those relationships and for us to actually be changing and growing like we would like to. So thinking about that, thinking about how can we do that, um, I've been thinking about, well, how can I encourage you to grow in your relationships even when you're stuck at home, even when you feel like you don't have any relationships because you can't get together with anybody. There are ways to do that. It takes some creativity and it will take some work on our parts. It's gonna take some forethought. We're gonna to have to really deal with it personally. So what I'm encouraging you to do is to take about a half hour today, maybe a half hour, sit down, spend time in prayer, Ask God, God, what do you want from me? How do you want me to change? What What do you want from me during this time of isolation? How do you want me to use my t extra time? Because quite frankly, we have a lot of extra hours in our day when we can't go anywhere. So we need to ask God, what do you want from me? How do you want me to change? Well, I, I'm asking you to sit down to write out what you want, what, you know, ask God what you want and then write down those answers. When we put pen to paper, it helps us to face those goals and to maybe even do those goals instead of just saying, yes, we spent the time, but then we let it all go away. So um, I believe that if we put ourselves under God's care and his way, he will help us. When I read um, Isaiah, it says, um, it says, you will keep perfect peace, all who trust you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. This is telling us that we will have peace when we fix ourselves on Jesus, when we look to Jesus, when we trust Jesus, we will have peace. When we stop to trust Jesus and we start to worry, it, we're trusting ourselves. We're saying, I know more, I can do it myself, and I will hold on to it. But then we are in a state of worry and we don't go anywhere. So our circumstances are not what causes us worry, it's the way we think about our circumstances that cause us worry. 
So I want to encourage you to change the way you think about your circumstances. Um, Isaiah goes on to say, trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is our eternal rock. God is the rock that we stand on. He is to be trusted, and we can trust him. We don't have anything to worry about when we put our trust in him. So when you spend this time praying about, you know, how do you want me to turn to you, God? How, what do you want me to do during this time? I Again, I want you to write it down. Write it down and, and put it to heart. I did this for myself, and what I learned when I did this was that um, first God wants me to spend time reading my Bible. He also wants me to pray, and, and for me, journaling is very important. So I spend my days, I read my Bible, I pray, and I journal. And when I do that, I journal out my prayers, and I actually end up doing more of what God asked me by writing it down like that. But then beyond that, God wants us to fill up the other hours productively as well. Not necessarily in Bible study, but in ways that are honoring to him and ways that are productive for us. So I made a list for myself, and in my list, I have casual reading. Like, I enjoy reading mysteries. I enjoy reading about, um, yeah, mysteries and, and true life stories. I love that. So I'll do that. Maybe I'll spend some time in study. I also feel convicted that I need to exercise. I need to eat well. Uh, God also convicted my heart that I needed to live in a place of grace and forgiveness in my home. You know, I'm with the same people every day and I can get, we can start to rub each other wrong when we're together all the time. But God wants me to live in a place where I am gracious and I am forgiving and I overlook slights and I don't really let those things get in my way. Um, another thing I put on my list was games. I like to play games, so I added that to my list. Um, I also added crafts. I may make some jewelry, or maybe I'll make a painting. You know, I don't know. But I feel like I need to stretch myself beyond what I'm comfortable with and try something new. So as you stop this week and you spend time doing this and you write it down, I ask you to come back to this post and write, give us your ideas of what you've written down. Encourage us so that we might encourage one another during this time.